Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kayleigh Allen and welcome to 10 rare plants that propagate well. This video is part of a top 10 series that I'm doing here on YouTube. You should find the playlist for that down below. I have a few different things in there like plants that acclimate well, top anthurium, top philodendron, things like that. But today we're going to focus on what propagates well. Now how do I define propagating well? Well for one thing I guess you could count the rate of failure as a really good indicator of how well something propagates. So if I have a plant and I take three cuttings of it, how likely are those three cuttings to survive? That's a really, really important factor. The second thing to consider is the speed of growth as well, because of course, if they don't grow very quickly, then they don't propagate very well and they take a long time. So that's another factor as well. The third factor I'm kind of measuring these plants on is how quickly they root, because if they're slow to root, they are slow to propagate and there is more chance of something going wrong. One thing before we get into the video, I would like you to know that this video is of course based on my opinion and my experience. If you do not know, I am the proud owner of the Rare Plant Shop. Here I have somewhere between six and seven thousand plants and when I keep one plant at a time, I'm normally keeping 30 to 50 of one given plant. So I get a really good all-rounded opinion of what works and what doesn't. I also of course only keep the plants that propagate reasonably well and aren't too difficult minus a couple of exceptions. So you will find that I have obviously a plant for everything in this list. That's because there's no point keeping stuff that is hard to grow. That just makes everyone's lives much harder. Without further ado, I'll get into it. This list is not ranked in any order, so it's not like the first plant that I show you is better than the last plant I show you. There's no particular order. They're just all pretty good at propagating. So without further ado, I'm going to grab the first plant. The first plant I'd like to talk about for being a good propagator, this plant isn't really, it's no surprise to anybody I don't think, so why not get it out of the way first, right? So the first plant that I think propagates fantastically is essentially any form of Monstera deliciosa. Now then, this could be the regular form of Monstera deliciosa, this could be the large form of Monstera deliciosa, it could be the yellow, which is what I have right here in this beautiful little pot, or it could be the white. I'm really generalizing because honestly it's all the same. Monstera have absolutely excellent roots, specifically Monstera deliciosa, whatever form of it. They just have really really strong roots. If you take a cutting of one of these plants and it has an aerial root that already exists, your cutting is it's going to succeed really. I'd say your risk goes down by about 60% if you just have a good aerial. Now obviously of course there is a risk of things rotting. That goes with everything in this list depending on how you're propagating. But generally speaking these these are just unbelievable. Not only that, but they look very pretty and they're very, very desirable right now. I'm sure nearly everybody knows about variegated monstera. I think unless you've been living under a huge rock, then you know what they are. As I mentioned before, this is the yellow variegated version. I'll show you it a little bit closer. It's not the easiest thing in the world to show, but this is mine here. This is one of them. This is variegated monstera aurea small form, so it's not the massive monstera like the one behind me here that can grow insanely large leaves. This one will stay a lot smaller. This one could be grown up a pole. Very, very nice plant. Just honestly, they're really good. Now, I will say something that I have discovered recently. I took equal propagations of the white variegated monstera and this one. I basically just took some cuttings of some other plants that I had. I think I had about a 40% failure rate on the white, on the albo, but on these I had a 0% failure rate, which I thought was quite interesting. Now that could be coincidence, but I thought I'd tell you anyway. I've never really compared propagation of the two directly before, so that is something I noticed. Again, it could be a one-off, I'm not sure. These guys seem to be strong as an ox though, these are one of my favourites. They are pretty underrated because everyone usually prefers the white variegation, but for that reason I think that the yellow variegation is cooler because not many people have them and then it makes it just more unique I guess. So this is Monstera aurea small form, but really it is representative of any form of Monstera deliciosa. They are just awesome to propagate. Get an aerial root, you should be absolutely fine. The next plant on my list that propagates really, really well, this has a really low failure rate on it and the aerial roots are absolutely fantastic. They make a great base for any good root system. This plant here doesn't look quite as good as it should just because it's so young, so you don't get the full effect of what the plant looks like. But this here is Philodendron Dark Lord and he is awesome and the reason he's called a Dark Lord is because he gets these beautiful, really dark leaves and these beautiful undersides. Now, when he gets mature, the leaf shape is a bit different from this. It's a lot pointier and a lot more angular. 
This is because it's really young, so I don't have the ideal plant to show you today. I do have one on the wall, but you will never see him. You'll just never see him. He's too high up, but he has a much more pointed appearance. So this is a young one, but my point is the propagation aspect on this plant is absolutely insane. Let me see if I can show you on camera. If I tilt that down there, you should get a really good vibe of what's going on here. I get aerial roots for days on them like this. I mean, this is just ridiculous how long they are. And you may or may not be able to tell here where my finger is. I've cut this plant before, I've cut it several times, and it just keeps growing. And they're great propagators. I get such good growth out of them. I find they're quite quick as well, so that really helps. They root really well, especially when given these initial aerial roots to start. When I do propagate this plant, I take a mixture of head cuttings that are propagated and sold, and then I take some smaller cuttings that are just node cuttings down the stem and those stay with me a little bit longer until they get going. So I kind of take two types of propagations and I actually do this for all my climbers but I just find that this one is super super quick. This one can obviously be cut across the top. This could be rooted and grown on. I wouldn't sell this like it is because it's a little bit it's a little bit sparse for me but this top cutting here rooted grown on a little bit more a little bit more compact would make for a beautiful plant so this is philodendron dark lord not the best example but trust me it is an amazing propagator it's well worth it the next plant on my list that i have to tell you about that is great to propagate this is probably no surprise to basically anybody but the next plant on my list is another monstera and it's monstera adansonii now then one mine is dripping all over the floor so if i stand weird then that is why I'm trying to avoid being dripped on to Yes, this is a variegated Adansonii. It doesn't matter. If you have at home Monstera Adansonii, narrow, round, anything like that, or green, it doesn't matter. If it's white variegated, it doesn't matter. If it's yellow variegated, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. They propagate really, really well. And that's because they just put out great roots. Again, Monstera, fantastic for this. I wanted to mention this slightly differently to the Deliciosa because I feel like everybody knows that the Deliciosa is a great propagator, but I don't know if they know that most Monstera are actually great propagators. So for that reason, I thought I'd put this one on this list. Here's a closer look at the Adansonii. It's not unbelievable compared to a lot out there. I will say that it could be more variegated, but it is very, very pretty. It does have a new leaf on the way. You just can't see it here. It does actually need to go up a pole. I haven't had time. Can you see here this huge root? There is actually more than one and they go all the way down at the back of the stem here. Just honestly, snip that off, get in and water for a bit or lecker or moss or whatever you want to do. Should be all right. Again, as with anything, yes, there's a risk of rot. Very low on these. This is why you are seeing a ton of these on the market at the moment. I know that variegated and Sony are absolutely everywhere. They're like a damn weed. I think I've said that before. This is because they are so easy to propagate. There are really no issues. So I guess if you want to invest in one of these, it's not the worst idea. Although they are depreciating a little bit at the minute in terms of value, they are going down. I know a lot of people aren't going to want me to say that, but it is true. The value is going down on these. This one's very, very cute. But again, it does not matter. It can be the green and Sony eye. They are fantastic stick to root. They're really, really great to propagate and give to friends and everything else. So this one definitely gets my vote. So the next plant I have to talk about, I warned you guys in a previous video that I'd be talking about this plant a lot because honestly, it is, as I like to call it, an all-rounder. It grows well, it acclimates well, it ships well, it also propagates well. And while I don't want to fill these videos up with the same plants repeatedly, I have taken care to make sure that I don't really do that. This one just has to go in because it's ridiculous. It's just so good. And if you haven't already guessed, if you're not a regular of my videos, that plant is philodendron, gloriosum. Oh my God, this is fantastic. I don't get failures when I propagate these plants at all. I mean, they just grow for me really well. I don't even see that there. That's a root coming off the, uh, the stem of the plant there, right there. It's gonna root no problem. This just needs to get a little bit bigger and I can propagate it, cut it, root it, grow it on. I do find as well, when these plants grow new leaves, when you cut them, they don't revert super, super juvenile. So the leaves don't go super small after they've been cut, or at least for me, they stay a little bit larger. Obviously that depends on the root system that you're left with when you cut the plant on the new section that you're propagating. But generally speaking, they don't do what e.g. Monstera deliciosa do, where they go ridiculously small no matter what. This doesn't tend to happen. You can get a nicer looking plant faster by propagating these. And I've got to say, this is just, how beautiful is that? Look at this leaf. Here's one here, looking sexy. Here's another one here that's in the way of a new leaf. 
and then here is one here. It's just the most stunning plant. As I say, there is a new leaf coming in right there at the front, which its tip is just sat behind a leaf, which is slightly worrying in case it comes off. Can I just position it? Sort of, yes, as long as I don't wave around the plant too much, it should be fine. But yes, these plants are amazing. Yes, you will get sick of seeing me talk about them, but look at them. To top it off, they look amazing. Like what's not to love about that? right? So yeah, they don't fail when I propagate them. I find that they do grow very easily. They're very good rooters. They root quite fast. They don't need a lot of love to look great in my experience. You can kind of neglect them. And I do find in a lot of cases, my gloriosum look a bit better when I leave them alone and I just let them be. They tend to look really great. They can size up very quickly as well. They can also tolerate lower light um, than a lot of other philodendrons. So they just get my vote. They get my vote. They're gonna get my vote every time. I'm really sorry in advance. But this again is philodendron gloriosum and it is absolutely perfection. Okay, the next plant that propagates really, really well, I actually have two to show you. I have one here in Lekka and I have a different type over here on the desk in soil. The next plant that I think propagates fantastically, and I mean not just from a stem cutting, but literally from node cuttings, as in like leafless node chunks, this propagates fantastic. The next plant I'd like to show you is, it represents a collection of plants in the same way that when I held up the yellow variegated Monstera, it represents Monstera deliciosa, same as the Adansonii and everything else. So the next type of plant that I'd like to tell you is fantastic at propagating is the Epipremnum variety. Now then, I try and hold this to the camera. It's not easy, it's dripping everywhere. This is Epipremnum pinnatum variegata, and it's very, very beautiful. Can I show you like that? Kind of. I realize it's not very close up to the camera, but it's it's dripping everywhere because I've just pulled it out of one of my tubs. This is the white variegated variety. But let me tell you, I propagated so many of these plants from one inch long node cuttings and I've rooted them no problem. I've done it in lecker and I've done it in moss and I don't get any issues. They're also really tough, by the way. So any hiccups in propagation, they can survive, no problem. These things propagate really well in water, by the way. Obviously, if you're doing a chunk of it, do it in moss or leka. But if you're taking more of a stem cutting with roots, water's absolutely fantastic. They love these. Now, I have that there. I'll put that down on the floor because I also have another guy that I've had for about two, three years now. I've had it so long. This here is a, a one viner because I keep cutting it. I've been putting little bits on the wall. This here is a one viner of Epipremnum penatum Cebu Blue, as it's known as Cebu Blue Pothos. And you could, yeah, you can tell on the camera. That's great because you can't always tell. This does, of course, look very, very blue. It's very beautiful. It could look better. As I say, I've chopped this a few times. It's had a chop here and it's grown up. I think I've left it alone for quite a while. It did have another vine down here, but I chopped that off. It is somewhere on the wall. I can't see it right now. I think it's behind a few different things, but this is it here. I do have some other smaller ones that I think I might have for sale soon within the next few weeks. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Now, some people in the US might tell me that this isn't rare and you could possibly be right. I think where you guys are, this isn't necessarily rare. I've seen this sold for like full pots of it in like Home Depot, in Lowe's, in everything like that. Over here, however, it is much more rare. We couldn't really hope to buy this in a garden center in any volume. I, I personally haven't seen them. If you have and you're in the UK or the EU or whatever, let me know. I know they're a little bit more prominent in the EU, but at least in the UK, these are not the easiest thing to get at all. It's just a wonderful plant. Honestly, it doesn't die. I have chopped, okay, I've chopped some of these plants off like this. It's not just this variety as well. I have quite a few Epipremnum varieties. I just chop them and providing they have a couple of aerials, I just stick them on the felt on the wall. I don't even root them. I stick them on the felt and they, they root. They root in really quickly and they live. They live with nothing. They live with next to nothing. So these plants are absolutely fantastic propagators. I cannot recommend them enough. I've dealt with enough Epipremnum varieties to know that most of them are kind of good. Most of the ones that you think of, they're absolutely fine. So I don't think it really matters which one you go for necessarily. You should find that they're all pretty easy. So this one here is Epipremnum panatum Cebu Blue. The other one I showed you before was Epipremnum panatum Variegata. And that is them. Very easy completely and utterly recommend. 
Again, we have another plant on my list that represents a family of a given genus, shall we say. I think I showed a different representation of this last time, so I'm switching it up today. The next plant I would like to tell you about that propagates like no other is anything within the Syngonium podophyllum range family, whatever you want to call it. Today, I'm holding up a very beautiful Syngonium albo. This one is very pretty. I think I noticed this a couple of weeks ago and I thought, you know what? This one hasn't had a spotlight yet, so I'm going to show you it. It's dripping all over my table, which is great. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful plant. In terms of irrigation, I think this is creeping a little bit on the too much side, but I'm going to wait because these other leaves are absolutely perfection. So we'll see how that one goes. I think it's certainly sellable at this point, but mm, it could be okay, I think. Really depends on what the next one brings. There is an awful lot of green on this side of the stem that you can't really see, so I'm sure it's absolutely fine. But as I said before, this represents anything in the Syngonium podophyllum range. So it could be the white variegated, it could be the yellow variegated, it could be, say, a pink splash, it could be a Syngonium mojito, it could be neon robusta, it could be just podophyllum on its own. It doesn't really matter. They're all absolutely incredible propagators. They grow really quickly as well. They root really quickly. They're just another all-rounder. I should probably do a video of plants that I consider to be all-rounders because I think it would be a great video. If you want that video, let me know down below because I'm pretty sure I can come up with some really good ones that like, they just top every category. But that is her. That is Syngonium Albo. Again, it represents everything. Doesn't really matter what you pick, you're good to go. They can be grown up a pole or they can trail these plants. I don't really see anybody trailing them. I don't know why, I guess it's just not the done thing. Even then, I haven't trailed them either. I haven't really grown them up anything. I haven't really trailed them. They're just marvelous. I don't get failures at all. It's so rare that I get a failure. Now, these can grow from one inch node chunks as well. They are much slower to start than the Epipremnum that I talked about but they can be done. They're just not quite as easy. Your best bet with these is just to get a little bit of aerial root and cut it that way. They can be propagated without an aerial root, but to be honest, the safest way to propagate anything is to use an aerial root if you're unsure. So great propagator, had to put it on the list. This represents a, a large variety really, but it's just the flagship one that I want to show you today because it's very pretty. There you have it. Syngonium podophyllum. So the appearance of the next plant alone is testament to how well it propagates because it just roots for days. It really does. And the next plant I have to show you is none other than Philodendron Jerry Horn. Now, if I could just show you what's going on here, there's a lot, and I don't know how much you're going to get on camera, but this is Philodendron Jerry Horn. I believe it is said to be a hybrid of Philodendron bipenifolium and Philodendron pedatum. I hope I've got that right. I really can't remember. They obviously change shape as they grow. I've propagated from this, so some of the new growth kind of goes funky and then it goes back to normal. So that's not the best thing if you're propagating certain plants and the shape changes. This would be one of them because it has a distinct shape, but the shape can range anything from this to literally what it will end up looking like when it's mature, and that is this. And they get way longer than this, by the way. This ain't even it. I've had leaves in here that are longer than my arm. It's incredible. It's really quite something. Now, again, you can see from this pot, I shouldn't really have to point it out, there's a lot of root there. This looks a bit funky, even though it's an aerial root, because it rooted into neighboring pots when I wasn't there to check on it. So to pull this plant out today, I've had to literally pull it from other pots. That is absolutely fantastic. Now, if I wanted to propagate from this plant, I could easily cut here, and there's enough aerials even up here to get that into a plant pot and to start growing with it. I could then take more cuttings down here, I could leave it, I could put it on a pole, I could do whatever I want. It's really on its way now to climbing and it's looking real, real hot. That's the newest leaf, it's a little bit fatter, but it's really, really beautiful. And honestly, these plants propagate so well. I have not had failures from these plants. They're very, very, very tough. I know a few of you guys have had some of these from me. Let me know how they did in your care. Personally, I've had nothing but joy with these. They're not the fastest growers in the world. I will say that, but they do propagate well. And no, I don't seem to get any loss. It just seems to take a little bit longer for them to get going. But I think once they have started going, they're good. They're just not necessarily super fast from the get-go. Not like, say, Epipremnum panatum. I would say that was actually one of the quickest ones, I think, that I've talked about today. Epipremnum panatum is the quickest. 
This is not as fast, but again, you're not going to have any issues. Make sure your humidity isn't super low, otherwise you probably won't get aerials like these. So just keep the humidity bumped a bit and you should get stuff like this occurring, no problem. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. And if that's how the aerials look, imagine the root system below. You feel me? These are absolutely fantastic plants, they really are. And they're a bit different looking. They're really, really cool. This is Philodendron Jerry Horn, which I believe is a hybrid of Philodendron bipanifolium and Philodendron podatum. Very nice plant. The next plant I have to talk about as a good propagator is kind of, I mean, some people would view it as not being a good propagator. So I thought I'd put it in and I want to gauge everyone's thoughts. Now, I deem them to be a reasonably good propagator. However, we don't have any control over it. That might not make any sense. It will in a moment. So my next easy propagator on this list would have to be anything in the alocasia or colocasia variety. Now then, I'll say one thing very quickly. Alocasia and colocasia. Colocasia propagate much faster. They grow faster. They're ridiculous. Alocasia are much slower. The reason that they propagate well is because they produce their own pups. You actually don't have to do anything. You just have to wait for pups to form. Now I can actually see a couple in here. You won't be able to see, I don't think. I've got more than one, but I think if I was able to get this up to the camera, if you can see this here in this pot, that is going to be a new little baby comb and eventually it will shoot up and produce a pup of this plant. And I didn't have to do anything. So in that sense, it's great because you can wait for your plant to pop, let it grow a little bit, don't disturb it, wait till it gets large enough and then remove it from the mother. And then you've got a brand new plant, it's established, it's got roots, it's great. So in that respect, they're absolutely fantastic. The reason that they're simultaneously not fantastic is that I can't propagate this plant if I wanted to. There's not really anything that I can do unless I use scientific methods, should we say. If you're wanting to know what this plant here is, I get a lot of questions about this, a lot of questions about this. This is not ill. I know this looks like an Alocasia zebrina. It's an Alocasia zebrina reticulata, which means that this weird patterning here on the leaf, that's supposed to happen. That's absolutely part of the plant. It's not sick. It doesn't need a feed. That is how it grows. It's an acquired taste for sure. But honestly, every single time this goes on camera, I get questions about it. That's what it is. And the reason I don't offer them for sale is because I have Juan and he's here and he hasn't popped for me yet. He is on his way though. I can see at least one pop, two pop, three pops. I can see three in there, but they just haven't quite activated yet. But fingers crossed, fingers crossed, this year they will, you know, they'll produce pups. But even then, obviously that's not that useful. So I guess if you're wanting to have a plant to pass to a friend or you want more of them in your house and you're happy to wait and you, you know, you're not in any good rush, these are fantastic because you don't have to do anything. You just let them do their thing. But if you forcibly want to propagate this, if you're selling it or anything like that, then not so great, not so great. I think that's why a lot of shops don't tend to stock too many alocasia. I know I don't. And that's because I cannot control propagation. It's really, really difficult. So really great plants. Love them. They're one of my favorites, but not so great on the propagation front. It really depends how you look at it. If you look at it as not having to do anything and they propagate themselves, fantastic. If you look at it as doing it for sale, no, they're not. I put it on this list just to basically gauge your opinion. I would say they're easy propagators on technicality because they do it themselves. But I understand in real world context, that doesn't necessarily mean anything if you're wanting to sell a bit of it. So it's on this list. This is Alocasia reticulata. It represents any Alocasia, same as a lot of the other entries on this list. It's still beautiful though. The next plant on this list is probably going to please a lot of you because this is a very, very desirable philodendron. It is not the easiest heart-shaped philodendron that I've ever propagated because that's probably a gloriosum, for example, but it is definitely up there. This, these things can root in water. I haven't rooted them in moss, but I have no doubts about them. They root just fine in lecker as well. They're really, really good. They also ship well. Side note, they're really good shippers. But this here is a really small one. It is. This is Philodendron Splendid. So this here is a hybrid of Philodendron Varicosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. And on this particular specimen, you can't see what's cute about it, but you get these really cute velvety leaves here. And what should happen, or not on every one, of course, 
but you get a blush of red up the back. You can kind of see it. I think it's coming off more in person than it is on camera, but you do get a red blush on the back of the leaf. When the leaf is new, you absolutely get that blush. It just tends to fade a little bit more. It doesn't really hang around like a varicosum does. But honestly, these are great. And as it happens, as it would happen, I've, I'm just looking at this now and I have propagated from this. Can you see this little piece here? I've obviously cut the plant here and we're getting a little shoot out here. Now, I honestly don't know when I propagated this, so I cannot tell you how quickly they grow back from propagation, but I can tell you that the propagations themselves root really, really nicely, and I don't have too many failures. These can fail, don't get me wrong. They can certainly fail a lot more than some of the other plants in this list, but it's nothing too detrimental. It's, it's a pass in my book. So these are absolutely fantastic. They are quite tough. I've mentioned this before. They can take a bit of a hit, to be honest. They can take being underwatered, and when they're watered again, they do plump back up really well. So they're a very, very nice plant to have. Again, very, very desirable. I think they've been desirable, I think, since I started trading, actually. They've always been something that people really, really enjoy. And I get it. I have one of these at home. I'm growing it up a pole. The pole's about two meters tall. It's looking absolutely beautiful but it's just a beautiful plant. And I'm here to tell you that it does propagate well. So if you want to get it, you're safe. The aerials on these ones, I will say this, the aerials on these plants are not as forthcoming as other plants, as other climbers. So for example, the Philodendron Jerry Horn I showed you earlier, or the Philodendron Dark Lord, they do grow better, they root quicker, you get better aerials. These, you kind of don't. I have baby ones on these, but it's nothing, it's nothing amazing. So a little bit harder to do, but they are a solid choice for a propagator. So for that reason, I do love them. They're absolutely stunning plants. Oh, they're so pretty and they just feel amazing. One last look before we move on. There you go. That is just, oh, it's so pretty. There you go. How beautiful is that? Oh, such a pretty plant. Right, I think we're on the second to last plant now, and there is a little note on this. Previously, I have shown you plants, and I have said this applies to all types. This next plant does not, and this is just based on my experience. I find this type of plant a little bit of a bitch to root and propagate. I'm not going to lie to you, and I have a lot of these. I have a lot of these. So, the next plant I have to show you is this variegated amedrium. I can't remember exactly which variety this is. I might have found out and put it on the screen for you. I might not. My apologies if I have not. So these plants run. They run like no tomorrow. They run as fast as if you're missing a bus. They seriously run a lot. Now you might think, great, easy propagators. No. <laughs> what I've found is, because I propagate and sell Monstera Oblica, that runs a lot as well. Now I can get those runners going quite quickly. With these, honestly, it's a different ball game. These take a lot to get going. And I find that you will get a leaf, you will get a quite a large piece of runner, and then you'll get a leaf. They seem to be very, very hard to manipulate and generally keep happy, I would say. Now, this variety I've had way more success with. I do have a medium, medium, blue and green. I have some propagating just down there, actually. I've had much less success with those because whenever I'm trying to propagate them and grow, you know, three leaf foliage to sell, I can't do it because the plants keep running repeatedly. I have so many runners just draped down my aisles. It's not even funny. This plant here, however, has been noticeably better. Funny I say that. This plant here, I do believe, is producing a runner right there. If I just take my finger away and show you it on the background here, that is producing another runner. This is basically what you get with these. You get foliage, you get some runner, you get a bit of foliage, you'll get some runner, you'll get some foliage. I think if you are gonna grow this and you're not gonna propagate it, I do recommend growing it up a pole and honestly wrapping the runners around the pole because I think you'll get a fuller plant out of it. I've definitely started to do that with mine at home. I do have the blue and the green at home on a pole and I've mixed them together to create a really beautiful little plant. That's taken ages to grow. They're not ideal. This one is better. And I guess if you have an affinity for runners that aren't oblique runners, because these are definitely different, then it might be easy for you. So I wanted to mention it. Again, this specific variety here seems to be fine. I don't have issues with it. But the others, like the blue and the green, I do. Let me see if I can very quickly grab for you a, at least one of them, a blue and a green, because I do have a lot of them propagating. Um, let's have a look. There's one here. I've got one plant that isn't basically stuck to the rest. What's happened is I've taken propagations and they've started running along the pots of lecker and now they're rooting into the lecker. 
So now I can't even pull a plant out. All I have to show you here really is this baby blue, which is absolutely adorable, by the way. This is a medium, medium, silver or blue. It, it goes by different things, I think. What have I got on this little tag? This was on the 10th of April I did this and it's it's not done fantastically. Obviously it's growing, cute, awesome, but it's not super quick. The white variegated one, however, much faster. It's, it's like night and day. So the last plant that I have to tell you about today, I actually cannot show you because I don't think I have any at eye level that I can actually grab. It's a bit of a nightmare. I think I might be able to see one over here. Give me two minutes. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So... This is really gonna illustrate my point of how easy these are to propagate, guys. So this here, seriously, this here is my last plant on my list. Can you see the size of this thing? Can you see the roots, by the way? Can we have a conversation about this? I think this needs talked about. Look at the roots. Look at the roots coming out. I'm gonna to have to cut this out of the pot because it's ridiculous. And when I squeeze this pot, it is absolutely solid. It grows so quickly, I cannot get them out the door quick enough. If there is a top propagator on this list, even though I'm not doing it in order, it would be this one. This is Philodendron Pareso Verde. Honestly, what is going on with this plant? The aerial roots have literally rooted down here. I'll try and show you the roots here the best I can. They've rooted off the plant and down here and joined others. This is a huge root mass that's coming out of the bottom of the plant. There's some more aerials here. This root here, I've just had to pull out of a poor defenseless, I think it was Syngonium albo that it just rooted straight into. It's ridiculous and it's showing no signs of stopping. Absolutely insane plant. Like what? You won't be able to see this at all and it's me tipping, it's not gonna do anything, but I can see the roots basically just popping up from all of the lecker on the top. It's ridiculous. And you might be thinking, okay, well, she's just shown us like, you know, the most rooted. I haven't. I know you guys have seen these on my videos here and there over the past few months, I think on repots, on, I think when I patched up the wall, there's been different individual plants of this plant shown and every single one is like this. It's not even funny. If you want something, let me tell you that grows quickly, roots quickly, climbs quickly, basically just aggressive, just pure aggression. Get this boy. He's absolutely ridiculous. Here he is here. Here's his new foliage coming out. Oh, we've got some mottling back. That's good. I don't know if you can tell. New leaf is, uh, let me try and grab it. You can see some mottling coming through on this leaf. I had a couple of leaves that are a bit greener. They're not fully green. They do have mottling on them. I don't know if you can tell but it's definitely getting a little bit better now, which is nice because I think I've moved it to a shadier spot. I'll let you know how that goes. But yeah, I, I need to talk about this because this is ridiculous. This is the number one plant on my list. If you want to propagate away, this is your boy. Forget variegated Monstera, forget Dark Lord, forget Jerry Horn. It doesn't matter, just this one. This is the best. It's better than Gloriosum. It's better than everything. I don't think I'll find a propagator quite like this one. That is insane. I can't even sell that now because it's too big to go in a box. I'm going to have to chop it down. Or maybe I could put it on the wall. What do you think? Back here. Nice boy. Right there. He would look quite good. Maybe we'll wall him. Watch this space. Let's see what happens. I'll put him down because he's actually a bit ridiculous. There we go. My hair is nearly completely flat and that was 10 rare plants that propagate well. As I say, there was maybe one or two curveballs thrown in. There was maybe one or two that you could really argue either way about whether they propagate. Obviously, my experience means that I lean towards a certain opinion when talking about these plants. So you might have different experience and a different opinion. If you have any plants that you think are absolutely fantastic to propagate, maybe you've got some curveballs. Maybe you have plants that you think are absolutely easy and you've had no problems. Meanwhile, everyone else is struggling. Please write them down below because I'm very curious and I would like to have a good read. Meanwhile, if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know I'm doing a good job and it helps out the good old algorithm, however on earth that even works. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, whether it be videos on the living wall, videos on my shop, videos on root rot, informational stuff, hauls, I've got it all. Please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video next week. Thank you for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. I will see you next time. Bye, guys.